The FCC approves four times the capacity for SpaceX Starlink satellites. That's a lot of capacity. Let's talk about it. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for Tea Time. Today, we have a little bit of misty morning and focus combination. The bergamot, so good. I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, hanging out, talking tech, talking photo, talking video. Today is a technology day. We're gonna be talking about SpaceX Starlink and the FCC. And now the FCC has approved 4X the capacity over previous satellites, let's say. And the reason being is they're going to be using a new band or a new frequency. And I wanna to talk to you guys about that today because it means a lot for us. 4X the capacity is really an amazing thing. And the reason being is we won't have slowdown as much during times of current congestion, right? Because it will be able to handle, once again, four times the capacity, four times the amount of people. It will actually be able to do it faster also, so you'll get faster speeds. So I wanna read an article over on Space News. They did a good job at just kind of putting together a summary of what is going on here. I'm gonna read some of that to you. I'll give you my commentary as I always do. And then I wanna hear from you down below. What do you think about all this? I'm kind of excited. So before I get into this, I just want to say that if you enjoy this content, even in the least, throw it a thumbs up. That's very helpful. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not. If you are, thank you very much. I appreciate you. Click this little button over here so when I go live or when a new video comes out, you'll be notified of it immediately. Also, if you haven't downloaded any of my eBooks, check them out. They are free. Go to jchristina.com forward slash books. And if you want to say thank you for all of my hard work, there's a little thank you button right down here. Click on that. Give a dollar or two if you like. If not, that's perfectly fine. Consider becoming a member of the channel. That would be even better if you want more Starlink content. I put together a Starlink playlist with over 250 videos over the last 29 months for you. Go check them out when you're done watching this video. And, and if you're looking for a VPN, I got one for you. The nice folks over there at PureVPN gave us a promo code, which is jchristina, or you can use the URL jchristina.com forward slash VPN, and you're going to get 15 additional percent off at checkout. So go check those nice folks out. Now that all the housekeeping is complete, let's jump right into this article. It starts out by saying SpaceX has secured conditional approval to use extremely high frequency E-band radio waves to improve the capacity of its low Earth orbit Starlink broadband constellation. The Federal Communications Commission, or the FCC, said on March 8th it would allow SpaceX to use E-band frequencies between second generation Starlink satellites and gateways on the ground. That's very important. Alongside already approved spectrum in the KA and KU band. So to be clear, the E band is specifically used for backhauling, taking the data from the satellites and pushing it straight down to the ground stations and doing it more efficiently, effectively, quicker, higher capacity, so on and so forth that you get from a higher frequency. Now, I'll tell you where there is some downsides to the higher frequency, but I'll do that in just a second. Anyways, the article continues. Specifically, SpaceX is now also permitted to communicate between 71 and 76 gigahertz from space to Earth and 81 to 86 gigahertz from Earth to space. Using up to 7,500 generation two satellites, SpaceX has been approved to deploy. So they can deploy a maximum of 7,500 so far of these type of satellites. Keep that in mind. SpaceX has plans for 30,000 Generation 2 satellites on top of the 4,400 Generation 1 satellites already authorized by the FCC. However, the FCC deferred action in December 2022 on whether to allow SpaceX to deploy the other three quarters of its Generation 2 constellation, which includes satellites closer to Earth to improve broadband speeds. Now, I talked to you guys about that in the last 
last video where SpaceX is now authorized to move or should be authorized to move those satellites from 530 kilometers down to 330 kilometers, a drop of 200 kilometers. That is a big drop. That is a lot. That's going to help with latency, with speeds. That's going to be helping a lot with a lot of different things. Now, I told you the negatives and the positives to dropping the satellites lower, but if you want to hear about that, watch yesterday's video. Anyways, the article continues. At the same time, the regulator, the FCC, also deferred action on SpaceX's plans to use the E-band frequency, citing it needs to first establish ground rules for using them in space. Ground rules in space. Eh. In a March 8th regulatory filing, the FCC said it found, quote, SpaceX's proposed operation in the E-band present no new or increased frequency conflicts with other satellite operators. That's good. But the order comes with multiple conditions, including potentially forcing SpaceX to modify operations if another satellite operator also seeks to use the radio waves. So... Just to keep in mind, right? Right now they're using KA and KU band and many of the satellite providers are still using those, right? So they are using the same. In this band, the E band, there's no one else using it. What they're saying here is, is if someone else asks to use it and we say, yes, it's okay that they use it also alongside of you, SpaceX, you will need to make modifications so you don't step on the heels of these other satellite providers. Elon Musk, SpaceX said, yeah, no problem. We could just make that modification in the software and they can. Very, very simple. Play nicely with each other. That's what the FCC is talking about here. The regulators, as they keep on calling them. Starlink satellites use the KU band to connect user terminals. In October, the FCC allowed SpaceX to also provide fixed satellite service for Generation 2 spacecraft using V-band spectrum, which, like the E-band, is also extremely high frequency and in its commercial infancy. So to kind of break this down a little bit, if you didn't know it, extremely high frequencies basically is a really short or tight wave and they don't travel as far, number one, but they give you a greater amount of capacity or a greater amount of throughput, okay? Because it is a higher or more intense frequency, right? Whereas a lower frequency, a wider band, right? Or a wider wave will be able to penetrate through more objects, as well as go further, but you're getting a little bit slower speeds. But that wider band gives you better attenuation. Follow me? Especially during fog or extreme weather conditions or anything like that. So while these high frequencies are great, they're going to only be used for backhauling for right now, getting the data from the satellite down to the ground station, that communication high speed, very tight. But like I said, that extremely high frequency does have some downsides to it. I wonder if they can do something like a hybrid system. So use like a low frequency and a high frequency, a large band and a tight band. So if you have like fog or snow or some type of inclement weather, right, where you end up with rain or whatever, that is going to add SNR or your signal to noise ratio will become worse or add greater attenuation, right? So if that was the case, maybe we'll move on to a bigger band to be able to get through the clouds, through the snow, through the weather, and then move back to high frequency once weather permitting. Maybe doing something like by looking at CRC errors or looking at uh, maybe your milliseconds, your ping, the speed in which you're actually getting there or something. Maybe there's a way to do that and create like a hybrid system. Maybe SpaceX could do that with our antennas, right? And have a low frequency and a high frequency. And during any type of weather conditions, it would just swap over to a lower frequency. It'll slow down speed, but you would end up with no outages. I don't know. I'm just I'm just talking here. You tell me. What do you think in the comment area? That'd be kind of cool, I think. A hybrid antenna. <laughs> I 
I don't know. Anyways, it finalizes by saying last year, SpaceX said that using the E-band radio waves for backhauling would enable SpaceX Starlink Generation 2 to provide four times more capacity per satellite than the earlier additions or iterations of their satellites. There are currently around 1,900 Starlink satellites launched under the Generation 2 license. And according to spacecraft tracker and astrophysicist Jonathan McDowell, about two thirds of these satellites are significantly larger and more powerful than the Generation 1, but are smaller than the full-scale version slated to launch on SpaceX's Starship. Now talking about Starship, guys, Tomorrow, be here, early in the morning, supposedly they're going to launch the next iteration of Starship, Starship number three, right? So this is going to be a big deal. Um, you guys asked me to go live, I'm going to do it. Once again, tomorrow morning, I will be live and we will hang out together and watch this happen. Its trajectory and its mission has changed a little bit. Instead of landing right around Hawaii, just north of Hawaii, they're landing like in the Madagascars in the Indian Ocean. They're also going to try moving or manipulating fuel within the unit. They need to do this because one day, one of these starships will be a gas station in Leo where ships will be able to pull up to it, dock, and then refuel itself and then fly off. Also, they might actually try the Pez dispenser and shoot out a small satellite or an object. We don't know as of yet, but they might do that also. So there's a lot of things that we don't know yet about the Starship 3, and I think that's what makes it so intriguing to me. I can't wait to see if it actually makes it into low Earth orbit, number one, if it completes a full orbit, in 90 minutes around the entire planet, splashes down in the ocean and does all the other things and does it well. So that will just get us closer and closer to seeing the, I call them generation two maxis, or maybe they'll be called the generation threes or the massive Starlink satellites that will add even greater capacity than just this E-band is going to add. So I think that this is very exciting. Once again, I hope you join me for it. Just to give you like a little fun fact, the Generation 2 Minis, for example, they have a wingspan of about 20 meters, 20 meters, and they weigh about two tons, something like that. The new generation or the new or the Generation 3 or the Maxis or whatever you want to call them, the full size, they're like 60 meter wingspan and like double the weight, double the size, okay? So this is a massive satellite in comparison to what's there currently. So there should be a big difference and advancement a bettering, let's say, of our experience with SpaceX Starlink moving forward once those new satellites are in orbit. And now that they're using the E-band for backhauling, that is already going to give more capacity that's going to free up a lot of us. So when some of us are having like that congestion time, 6 p.m. to like 9 p.m., everyone's home from work, on the computer, everyone's gaming and downloading who knows what, well, at that time, there's usually a slowdown in the speeds. Well, once we see 4X the capacity, we're not gonna have that slowdown anymore, or let's say very little, because we can see folks in Europe, for example, have a lot better or greater speeds than we do here in the US. So anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have, throw the video a thumbs up, like I said before, and finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools I've invented for you and me over the many years, and I hope there's something there that you might like. If there is, please pick it up and support me and my family. Don't forget my teas and all of my merch. Take a look at my book and all the rest of the stuff. <laughs> Anyways, guys, many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay connected, and we'll see you in the next one tomorrow morning. Take care, guys. Bye.